Hey, what's up guys? Seacox97 here. Long time no see. So, there's a certain challenge going on YouTube right now called This Is Not My YouTube. Now, usually I don't like these YouTube challenges because I kind of think they're dumb, but this one has a really good point to it. And I think I can bring a certain point of view to the questions that certain huge YouTubers may not, but more of the mid-tier level like I am. Question number one, how do you find out about new videos? Subscription box. Honestly, I haven't had the subscription problem that a lot of other people have been having. Not to say that doesn't exist, because I find it much more believable that a massive corporation like YouTube would just ignore all of its users rather than try and fix the problem, because we're, we're talking about YouTube here. But yeah, subscriptions basically, and if I'm not subscribed to a channel, I'm just gonna click on its channel to see if it uploads new videos until it basically earns my subscription pretty much. Question number two, what's a feature of the site you miss? I miss customizing channels. Back in the day, channels, you could actually upload an entire background image and colorize it and set everything up in your own customizable way, so when you actually clicked on someone's channel, you felt like you were entering their own world in a way, like that was kind of the novelty of it. But now, pretty much every channel looks the same other than the banner and it's just kind of very business-like now instead of just fun and customizable. I also miss video responses and I miss how easy it was to check your messages. I did not know how to check my messages for years. Granted, I never really checked them, but it would have been nice to at least have a much easier way of finding it because now you got to click through so many different tabs like everything is just like tab after tab after tab now instead of just very simple go to my videos edit the video. It's just not simple anymore. Question number three, what is your least favorite trend on YouTube? Oh boy, there are a lot of trends that I hate. This trend's been around for a while, but I've always hated it, the vlogger trend. If you don't have any talent or skill at anything, what are you doing on YouTube? Why do you have a million subscribers if all you do is literally just talk to a camera all day? Like, vlogging is the easiest possible thing you could do. You can literally just upload multiple videos every day and just talk into the camera. What I'm doing right now, I can do this every single day, and there are channels out there that get millions of views just by doing this. That's always annoyed me. Another trend that I hate is the bullying trend, like Leafy and a bit of Keemstar, where it's pretty much just attacking other YouTubers and causing drama and hate just for the sake of views. I also hate the fake pranks. Uh, basically all the major trends that are going on right now pretty much. Question number four, what is the most drastic thing you've done to get views slash subs? I've done a very drastic thing that made me lose subs and views and that was quitting Nerf videos, which for some reason some of my viewers still haven't gotten that message, but uh, yeah, I'm done with Nerf. I've been done with Nerf for a year and a half now. <sighs> drastic thing to get views and subs. Honestly, I haven't really done a drastic thing to get views and subs because unlike all the big YouTubers that pretty much just follow the business side of things, you know, how to get views and subs, I've kind of done the opposite. I've accidentally gained uh, success on YouTube through Nerf videos, and I've pretty much just always done what I wanted to do. Like the My Mom Play series, one of my favorite series I've ever done. Every time I make a video in that series, I love it. And they do not get any views at all. But it's kind of a balance between what you want to do versus what you have to do. And luckily, I don't have to do things in order to earn money on YouTube right now. But I probably will in the future. It's, it's a tough balance. It's just a crazy mad world out there. Question number five. Do you have any regrets on YouTube? Content, strategy, personal. Ah, uh, I regret... Well, okay. First thing, I regret using copywritten music. Back in the day, I just made videos. I used music that I found on iTunes that I thought was cool, uh, and that was it. And uh, all of those major Nerf videos back in the day, you know, the ones with millions of views, I do not earn a single cent off of any of those videos because I use copywritten music. But again, I was a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know that I would end up earning money on YouTube or, you know, creating a business. You know, it was just for fun, pretty much. It was a hobby. Now, do I regret quitting Nerf videos? That's the big question. Some days I do, some days I don't. Um, I think overall, it's just a step of growing up for me because yes, I could be making, you know, epic Nerf War videos at the age of 25 and, you know, making them as cool as possible, but Really, you can't take it seriously. Like, it's just toy guns. You can paint them to make them look however you want, but it's just, you can't take it seriously. And I want to be taken seriously. Now, YouTube isn't really the place to take things seriously, but I think when there is something on YouTube that you can take seriously, it's much more powerful. Yeah, Nerf videos, that's a, it's a gray area. Not really sure if I regret it or not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I also regret just not making more videos. Like, honestly, I could have been making so many more videos. I have so many days where I just, like, don't do anything. It's like, why am I not just making videos? I can make videos right now. There's a good amount of things that I regret. Question number six. How has your channel changed since one year ago? Well, a year and a half ago, I was still making Nerf videos. Barely, though, because towards the end, I was kind of teetering off, but I did make two final big Nerf videos, which, to me, are 
easily some of the best nerf videos I ever did. They got a good amount of views too, which I'm really happy. I ended strong there. But um, I don't make as many videos today. Uh, the ch my channel obviously doesn't get as many views, but it is kind of frustrating when you know you spend a year of your life making a video like Spartan Super Soldier Episode 8 and uh, it doesn't get even a fraction of the amount of views as a video like Nerf War the Assassin or you know, really basic Nerf War that didn't really take a whole lot of time for me to make. Question number seven, what do you do to support your favorite creators? I watch all their videos. Philip DeFranco, I watch every single video that he uploads on his main channel. Rooster Teeth, I watch a good amount of their videos. I used to watch them a lot back in the day, back when Red vs. Blue was really good, but um, now, uh, every now and then I'll watch some of their videos. Funhouse, I watch all their videos, except the podcast. The podcast are too long, but I really like Funhouse. And actually, with woo, and with Philip DeFranco, I actually bought one of his t-shirts because it was Game of Thrones themed and I love it. It took about six months to arrive at my house, Philip. I don't know why it took so long, but I love the t-shirt. I always get compliments on it, so um, thumbs up. I also went to RTX twice, so that was really me supporting the uh, Rooster Teeth channel and Let's Play and the Achievement Hunters and all that. But, uh, yeah, I just watch a ton of their videos. Red Letter Media, another great channel that I watch all of their videos that they upload because Red Letter Media is great. Question number eight. How do you define success? Uh, money. Just kidding. But I kind of thought about this for a while, but I think I've nailed it down to pride. If you are proud of something that you have done, if you have spent time making something and you finished it, and you are proud of what you did, you are proud of the outcome that it gave you, then to me that is success. So that could mean money. You made something that made a ton of money. You're proud of that probably. Okay, you're successful. But if you made something that didn't make any money, that no one really knew about, but you worked hard and you did it and you love it, then to me that is also success. So yes, I think the final 10 things you should never do in Nerf War, the final Nerf video I ever made, that was a successful video. But I also think Spartan Super Soldier Episode 8 or My Mom Plays PT, videos like that, I think were also successful. Deep Sheep Plays Left 4 Dead, uh, my most recent video, last one I uploaded, I love that video. That's one of my favorite gaming videos I've ever done, one of the best gaming videos I've ever done, just honestly one of the best videos I've ever made. It got no views, but I'm proud of the video. When me and Camden and Spencer and Robbie, we were in that video, we played Left 4 Dead together. When we watched that video, that was a great time. That was a great experience. We all constantly quote, different moments from that video every single day. To me, that's a success. Final question, question number nine. Are you happy? Wow, did Bo Burnham make this list? Am I happy? I don't think it's possible to say yes only or no only to this question. There's always a reason to be happy about something, but there is always a reason to not be happy about something. I think I can summarize it as I'm happy but frustrated. I'm happy because YouTube has brought me to where I am today. I would not be wanting to become a filmmaker, I wouldn't be making films, I wouldn't love making films if YouTube wasn't around and I hadn't discovered it. YouTube brought me into that world and it allowed me to create content and then share it with other people. Because before that, I would burn them on DVDs and then I would just show them to friends and family. Through that, I realized I wanted to become a filmmaker and here I am today. That does make me happy. The fact that I am able to actually have a job on YouTube doing the thing that I love. Granted, sometimes it's really hard to do the thing that you love, uh, and a lot of things get in the way, which is where the frustration comes into mind because, well, honestly, YouTube, I don't like YouTube nearly as much as I did back in the day because like I was saying in previous questions, YouTube to me has really become a business. Everything is dictated based on what will get views and there's no real creativity left on the channel. A uh, channel like Funhouse I love because you can tell that almost every video that they do, they put their all into it. Yes, they are a business. They have a set upload time every day. But the videos, they work hard, and you can tell that they enjoy doing it, for the most part. And there's just a lot of creativity involved in that, and that's why I love that channel, and I'm amazed that I didn't discover it until like a year ago. YouTube has really become a business where it feels like it's dictated by certain trends, and if you're not part of the trend, then you can't catch on. And that's what's frustrating to me, because YouTube is no longer a place where a silly 12-year-old kid can just make dumb nerf videos with his friends. and actually get views and comments and likes and people actually support that. Now it's all about, ew, cringe, ooh, that was the cringiest video I've ever seen, oh my god, lol, kill yourself. And I guess YouTube's always had that, but it's never really been apparent until now. So those are my thoughts and my answers to the this is not my YouTube trend. Apparently I'm supposed to challenge three people to this, so I'm just gonna challenge the three closest friends that I have that still use YouTube. Uh, Rocker Z Zoom, Robbie, 
do that. Crazy Jack 28, who has been Alex, he's been making videos a lot more lately, and uh, I'm fine with him doing the vlogs because the world that he is in right now, oh my god, he is in so much stress, there's so much going on that I can understand that the only thing he could do is vlogs, but also the difference is vlogs, he's not making thousands and millions of dollars off of doing the vlogs. That's the only thing he can do, so that's the big difference between him and other major vlog channels. And my buddy XAlien7 slash Zexus, come on. You're making YouTube videos, do that. This is not my YouTube. I want to hear your thoughts about it. So that is it for this video. There is going to be a lot more content being uploaded soon. Uh, just be patient, guys. There's not a whole lot that's going to be happening for a little bit here, but uh, I will do my best to keep you updated. So that is it for this video. See you guys later.